Hello and welcome. My name is Peter Anderson and I'm the ITCSC Marine Teacher at Radom Air School College. In this video and the videos to come, I will try to cover the new ITCSE syllabus in marine science here on video. <coughs> These videos are made for my own class at Radom Air School College, but if anyone else can use them, you're more than welcome to. Uh, the new ITCSE syllabus in marine science is new. Uh, it used to be only a O level or a ASA level class, where the ASA um, level class was quite hard. Uh, but now finally we got an access to an ITCSE class, uh, which will be very nice. Um, the syllabus contains six major things, the earth and its oceans, sea water, marine organisms, nutrients and energy, marine ecology, and finally, but not least, human influences on the marine ecosystem. I will now uh, go over each of these um, in a short form. So section one of the syllabus, 1.1, is the structure of the Earth, where we'll go over Earth as a planet, its place in the solar system, and the structure of core, mantle, and so on. Section 1.2 will then expand on plate tectonics, uh, on the fact that Earth is moving, and we got plates moving towards each other, convergent, moving away from each other, divergent, and um, transform boundaries, um, look at how the Earth is changing, and how um, this has led to formation of the ocean, how different boundaries can give earthquakes and volcanoes, and look at tsunamis. So a lot of standard geography stuff here on 1.2. Uh, 1.3 is oceans and the sea, looking at the five big oceans, uh, look at the map, look at different between oceans and seas, also uh, describe our maps and diagrams, the geomorphical structures of the ocean. And section 1.4 uh, will then go into the physics a bit more, look at tides and currents, how uh, the pull from the moon and the sun affects our tidal ranges, and how currents uh, move the uh, big conveyor belts around our planet with water. We'll get gyres and formation of rip currents and stuff like that. So the first part here is really about what is the Earth, what is the ocean, and then physics of movement of water in the oceans. So section two on seawater is a lot of chemistry and physics looking at the property of seawater. 2.1, the water cycle, will look into uh, seeing water going from solid to liquid to gas and back again, and looking at evaporation, um, and how the kinetic energy of the molecules will affect the change from one state to another. So it's, it's a lot of basic science and a lot of basic physics looking at that. 2.2 is a lot of chemistry. We're going to look at pH and salinity, uh, learning stuff like compound, mixture elements, um, and learning how to measure pH, how to measure salinity. Also look at how some dissolved gases like CO2 can affect the pH of our seawater. We're also going to look at effect of temperature on when we dissolve things in seawater. And we're going to look at how different environmental factors affect salinity, and there's more to it than that. So this is quite a big part uh, with a lot of chemistry and physics in it. 2.3, look at dissolved gases where we look mainly at CO2 and carbon dioxide. And we're going to look at how concentration in the atmosphere and concentration in water are intertwined. Also going to look at how temperature and pressure can affect um, the concentration of dissolved gases. 2.4, we'll look at density, how to define density, how to investigate the temperature, effect on density, like why cold water sinks down, warm water rises up, or it's going to look at how salinity affects density, and look at how pressure also affects density. 2.5 will look on the effect of increasing depth, 
how light penetration, pressure will change, how temperature will change as we go from the top layers of the ocean and further down. We'll also look on how uh, concentration of salt gases change as we go down. And 2.6 will then look at upwelling, um, describe how winds can cause upwelling, which will lead uh, cold water going from the bottom and coming into the photoactive uh, zone, and that will lead to a blossom of algae. And that will also um, be a case study of looking at El Nino. There's way more to it than this, but these are just the first points I will look at. Section 3 in the marine syllabus are marine organisms. So here we move into pure biology. And 3.1 is cell structure and function, classic biology, uh, describing the structure of plant cells and animal cells, the similarities and differences. And we're also going to look at um, prokaryote, actually bacteria cells, learning how to identify cell structures and look at pictures of them. 3.2 is about reproduction and uh, looking at the difference between asexual and sexual reproduction in uh, marine organisms. 3.3 takes us into classification, learning how to identify different groups, and we're going to spend some time learning how to use a binormal naming system, um, state three domains used in classification, and also look at uh, the different kingdoms of eukaryotes. So again, very much classic biology, and also, I hope, for most people, great fun. 3.4 then takes us into the animal kingdom, and we are going to learn how to identify uh, the different groups of marine vertebrates, um, a lot about structures of fish, how to identify a lot of different marine invertebrates, um, and there's a lot of detail here I'm only going to go into when we get to that specific video, because there's a lot of context here. We're also going to look at how to look at uh, how identifying and comparing biological specimens, both from cells and whole organisms, using microscopes and photographs. And a classic thing that Cambridge loves, we are going to learn how to calculate magnification. 3.5 takes us into the plant and protosis kingdom. We're going to look at seagrass, seaweed, flagellates, and diatoms. Um, so we're just going to have a few organisms here to look at. And 3.6, we're going to go into uh, animal life cycles, specific the leatherback turtle and the coral polyp. Use them as kind of example organisms for different life cycles in the ocean. 3.7, we'll look at migration in the marine ecosystem, both horizontal and vertical horizontal and vertical, how organisms can, can move in the water and migrate. Last but not least, I didn't mention it during animals, we're also going to use learn how to use keys to identify organisms. Um, and that's quite fun, uh, but if you haven't done it before, it's something you probably need to spend some time on to be good at. So, a great chapter here filled with biology and fish and marine organisms though so that's probably going to be really fun and interesting for most people in section four we are moving into more classical biology actually so classical that a lot of it here is also covered in the ITCSE biology syllabus so if you are doing or already have done ITCSE biology you're going to have uh, a lot of things you already heard about and that might be a huge advantage 4.1 look at nutrients protein lipids starch sugar how to identify them what the functions are and this is by the way the exact same way that we do it in IDCC biology we're going to describe the functions of the nutrients groups and we're going to look at how nutrients are distributed in the ocean how they're cycled and we're going to outline what bacteria do to keep this cycle going 4.2 is respiration Again, classical biology, the breaking down of organic matter to create energy. And 4.3 is photosynthesis, also classical biology, how light energy leads to capture of carbon, into chemical energy, and the release of oxygen. There's, of course, a lot more to it, but these are very classical subjects in biology. 4.4 is feeding relationships, looking into 
where does energy come from? Mainly the sun, of course. And then looking to food chains, food webs, and looking into the different roles of predators and prey, and the different feeding relationships we will see in the marine um, environment. Uh, we're also going to be looking at stuff like uh, consumers, different types of consumers, decomposers, and how to calculate the amount of biomass, and how to draw uh, pyramids, both of numbers, biomass, and energy. Section 5 is perhaps the subjects most people think about when they start taking marine science. This is what we're interested in, I hope so at least. So it's marine ecology, and 5.1 talks about the different components of the ecosystem. Again, uh, the syllabus here also have a lot of crossover with standard IDCSE biology, so there is a lot of advantage to taking both classes at the same time, perhaps. We're going to look at all the different types of marine ecosystems, wetland, coral reefs, sandy shores, muddy shores, rock shore, kelp forest, seagrass bed, mangrove forest, and so on. Uh, we're also, 5.2, we're going to look at investigating different ecosystems, look at population sizes, species. Um, so a lot of more classical biology there as well. 5.3 is going to look at the open ocean ecosystem. Uh, that system which has the deep ocean, the open ocean, and looking at the effect of sunlight, going to the twilight zone, into the deep zones. And there's a lot there we're going to go into a lot more detail with when I go over that specific chapter. 5.4 is rocky shores, shores that are affected by wave action, a subject that's been part of, part of marine science ever since the class started, so a very classical subject where you look at environmental factors affecting the rocky shores and how biotic and abiotic factors affect the distribution of species on the shore. 5.5 used to be called sandy shores, but now it's called sedimentary shores, shores where you have sand, silt, mud, and how that affects species living there. 5.6 goes into detail about the mangrove forest and how it affects uh, biodiversity and how animal species adapt to living in the mangrove forest. And 5.7, here we finally get Finding Nemo, we are going to look, look at tropical coral reefs. So in each of these sections here, there's going to be a lot more, but this is just to give you an idea of what the syllabus covers and what we will be learning in the year to come. The final uh, part of the syllabus, uh, chapter 6, looks at human influences on the marine ecosystem. And yeah, we do have a lot of influence on the ocean, and the ocean has influence on us. So this is a really important chapter, and the one that takes us from, you know, the chemistry, the biology, and also into more social sciences and economics. 6.1 is an overview of human interactions. Um, 6.2 looks into how tourism impacts the ocean, socioeconomic factors, uh, and how to look at doing sustainable tourism. 6.3 look at fishing, uh, how fishing is quite important, uh, looking at different fishing methods, how to navigate fishing ships, but also look at how overfishing can damage population, uh, damage fishing stocks. And looking at to outline and evaluate, you know, more sustainable fishing strategies. 6.4 look at aquaculture, how to like farm fish, farm marine organisms. 6.5 looks at energy from the ocean. We're going to look at oil and oil drilling and how oil is moved around in tankers, how to try to limit oil pollution, and looking at the economic and social advantages and disadvantages of using fossil fuels fuels and we're also going to look at renewable energy from the ocean in the form of wind wave and tidal energy 6.6 .6 looks at the unfortunately um, big problem of plastic pollution how plastic moves in the ocean impact of microplastic on marine organisms and ecosystems how ocean gyres leads to formation of these huge plastic patches Garbage patches and evaluate strategies for how to limit this. 
6.7 look at eutrophication, how adding too much nutrient to water can lead to algae blooms and all the different side effects we get from that. 6.8 will look at climate change and how CO2 increasing the atmosphere will affect both the chemical and effect the chemical effect as in seawater and how temperature it will affect and how the ocean is in fact a huge heat sink here and ex uh, absorbing a lot of the energy that will otherwise be let into the atmosphere. And 6.9 looks into conservation strategies. How can we save species? How can we look at species richness? And how can we come up with strategies to conserve marine organism species? And once we're done by that, we cover the entire ITCSE syllabus in marine science, and hopefully we learned a lot, and now we're ready for a really great two final exams. So this was just a short overview on what is in this syllabus here. That's a lot of stuff I haven't done in detail, but I will do that in way more detail when we get over each chapter in a specific video. Thanks for staying around. If you have any questions, please ask here and or look at the videos to come, which will cover the rest of the syllabus in way more detail. Thank you.